Hi there VC, Steve Whitty here, uh, time for another video, you know, it's been a bit, um, I've been a bit quiet, it's been, I've been four weeks, four or five weeks since the last video, um, just really haven't felt the muse to do it, I haven't got anything to say, um, apart from really I was thought I'd wait till the end of the month and to do a uh, recent finds video for, for my purchases I got in, and stuff I was given in March, so, Without further ado, one album that I ended up being given. This is Midnight Soul. It's a comp on the Atlantic label. It used to belong to a G Holding. I think it's this has been to a few parties. Um, great comp. Um, there you go. And the Plum and Orange Atlantic. Classic old. It's mono as well. And what you've got on it, you've got um, Otis Redding, Wilson Pickett, Brother Mac Jack McDuff, Percy Sledge, Jimmy Hughes, Rufus Thomas, Little Mac and the Boss Sounds, Joe Tex, Benny King, Solomon Burke, uh, Don Covey, and Booker T and the MGs. I think it's a Midnight Soul, it's a smoother soul album. A lot of comps on Atlantic on, on the soul. And they're always worth picking up. You can usually find them in the um, cheap bins. Worth, well worth checking out. Another album that was given. It's um, Nick Kershaw, The Riddle. This came out in 1984. The title track, The Riddle, was a top five hit for him. I don't think it was his biggest hit, but it, well, it was a really big hit for him. This represented the peak of his... Um, popularity in the in the UK um, the other so songs I like on here Don Quixote um, White Boy that's another good good song I think that was another single as well um, problem that Nick Kershaw had he was quite a serious musician um, and um, but he sort of got lumbered with the pop set sound you know I mean, the, the, the videos he wrote some good songs um and i think this sort of has represented peak and i think he wanted to go a different direction and the audience is, is the audience trouble with pop being a pop um, artist your audience don't grow as much as you want to grow this is produced by peter collins um he was produced uh, Rush albums, he produced Operation Mindcrime for Queensryche as well, amongst others. Um, yeah, so actually, it's not a bad album. It's um, it's on the heavier side, side of pop. It's a pop, it could, I could consider it a pop rock album. Um, um, I think yeah, it's well worth having. Um, belonged to Adele. No, I don't think it's that Adele. Um, mind you, she could afford to buy Nick Kershaw now, I suppose. Next album um, that was given is the Animals, Best of the Animals. This is a Canadian issue. And this is on the quality label. Um, and at this time, you can see from the cover of the album, um, Alan Price had left the band by then. Um, Pretty much standard fare for a greatest hits. Um, got House of the Rising Sun um, on there. Um, it doesn't have the debut single, Baby Let Me Can I Take You Home. Maybe because I don't think it was a hit in in America. I think the first hit they had in America was House of the Rising Sun. Um, I'm Crying, the follow up's on there. Um, we've got to get out of these places on there. Bring You Back Home, It's My Life. Um, I think this came out in 66. That's the back of, of it. And obviously, recently we lost Hilton Valentine, um, who, um, with the House of the Rising Sun, probably one of the most identifiable guitar riffs ever, ever put on record. And certainly, uh, you know, for those who were learning to play the guitar, a sort of key elements um for one for those uh, those people who wanted to pl learn to play the guitar the 
another album I was given. It's Gene Chandler, and this is a Gene Chandler album. No, this is on Joy Records. This is a comp. It came out in 1969. Um, Gene Chandler, excuse me. Um, best known song is on here is Duke of Earl, which was a hit for him in the UK and America, uh, which I think da da the group Darts covered in the late 70s. Um, it's pretty much um, sort of like... Um, early soul sort of doo-wop um, uh, vocal this is a version of Stand By Me's on here Daddy's Home which in the UK Cliff Richard had a uh, number two hit with um, yeah it's, it, I actually quite enjoyed it it's a, I've listened to it a couple of times a good little listen um, as I say these are sort of like little comps that's worth uh, picking up the final record I was given um, I've been accused sometimes of cutting corners and um, it's Lou Reed Street Hassle. Um, this came out in 78 I believe and it's on the Arista label. Um, um, I actually think it's a really good album. Um, Lou Reed at this point um, he, on Arista Clive Davis, I read his biography, the biography of him and Clive, Clive Davis, the boss of Arista, really believed in uh, Lou Reed. I think he gave him sort of liberty to do what he wanted. Um, no obvious single on here. You know, the title track's about 11 minutes long. It deals with uh, rough sex and the aftermath. Um, but there are some good songs, but there wasn't a hit single uh, on, on here, unfortunately um, for him. Um, but Lou Reed's being Lou Reed would do what he wanted to do, you know, and that's probably part of his attraction as an artist. Right, convenient point to have a quick slow up of tea. Now to the albums I've purchased. Um, Richard and Linda Thompson shoot out the lights. 1982 this was the last album they released as a married couple the relationship had sort of broken down at this point and the album is a very it's a very, knowing this makes the album very hard to listen um but the actual tour that promoted this album was an absolute um was a bum fight um space space so it was really it, the animosity between it, um, between them, it was difficult to, to a lot of fights and whatever. Um, but you know, you've got, um, don't worry, get an egg on our love, walking on a wire, man in need, just the motion, shoot out the lights, back street slide, did she jump or was she pushed, wall of death. These are songs that sort of it's, it's a breakup album. It's a classic breakup album. As I said, it's a hard listen at times, knowing what happened. I think they've made up, um, obviously. Uh, but for Linda Thompson, she couldn't perform for ages. She, the whole experience left her, I want to say shell shock, but she didn't make any, any records for, her, for another, at least another 20, maybe 20 years. I'm not, not too sure, but... Um, yeah, it's, it's an album well worth checking out as any Richard and Linda Thompson album is. Um, moving on, a reissue, and probably one of my favourite albums in the 90s, Therapy Trouble Gum, right, which originally came out in 1994. This is a music on vinyl reissue. Um, this is a very intense listen. Um it is fair. It is fair. So uh, you've got to be you've got to be in the right frame of mind to listen to this because it can it can it's one of those albums that can drag you down. Um, I, I, when I came out, you know, if I played this to death on the CD, I've still got the CD. Uh, you got a nice scream age, scream age, which was a big hit single for them. Um, a lot of self loathing on here, on here. Um, Andy Kearns. And I think what it struck a chord with me uh, at the time. I was 
cut hit 29 and I, I sort of drifted. I didn't even got a place in Yarn. I was still living at home at that time. Um, it was a tackle on religion, hell belly. Stop it, you're killing me. Nowhere. Great commercial song. Die laughing. Unbeliever. Trigger inside. Lunacy booth. Ice, version of uh, Joy Division's Isolation. Absolute uh, wonderful. Turn. Fentex. Which has the great, which has the great opening line of masturbation saved my life, um, unrequited brain sore, and then at the end brain sore. In a little bit of the chun and cheek of, of Andy Can singing, "You're my sunshine." Uh, so it's um, really, it's really good. It's really great, great album. It's hard rocking album. Um, I remember watching something on the telly. This got nominated for a Mercury Prize in '94. I think the critic writer Tony Parsons said it's only the question mark that's, uh, that's that keeps um, therapy from being a heavy metal band. Great album. If it's well worth checking out, if you have never heard it. Couple more reissues. Um, when, that came out. There was a box set that came out towards the end of last year. Um, by the band Trees, and I picked up on it because I saw it in in uncut um, best of uh, reissues um, for the year. So I listened to it. Obviously, been working from home, so I streamed it. I just fell in love with it. For oh, Christmas treat to myself, I'll go and buy a copy, and it sold out. So I was a bit disappointed. Then saw that. Lo and behold, they'd reissued the first, the two albums, Band Trees. Um, it's folk, psych folk. Um, they get um, sort of tied in the same tree as Fairport Convention, um, and a bit more than that. This is the debut album, The Garden of Jane Delaunay, issued in 1970. Um, this is the band here. Um, sadly, the lead singer, um, Celia Humphreys, passed away earlier this year. Um, she's got a beautiful voice, beautiful voice. Um, but it, it's just absolutely... What, what, both albums, and I'll show the second album in a, in a moment, both wonderful albums. Sort of pastoral, just takes it to, an, to another level. Um, it's been reissued on the Earth label, and they seem to be doing a lot of um, classic folk um, stuff. And Briggs, the time will come. I think it's been reissued this month in a couple of weeks. On green, nice green vinyl. Um, and I like the download card. Really nice touch with the download card. It's a postcard off the back cover. So you can post that on to anyone who may want it. Um... As I say, it's a beautiful sounding album. Um, that's the debut album. So they only made two albums. The second album, On the Shore, uh, issued in 1971. Um, again, follows on more of the same. Um, psych Folk. Um, Originally, it released on the CBS label. Um, again, green vinyl. And again, the postcard with the download code on it. Um, as I said, they were issued, they were issued originally on CBS. They didn't sell at all. This is why. So the original copies are highly sought after, and I believe you'd be paying a couple, a couple hundred quid at least um, for, for, for for copies. Um, one of the great lost bands, Trees. Um, if you can get hold of them, so they're still available. Really, I would recommend. Give it a listen on, on your favourite streaming site and um, and if you can, buy, buy those albums. They're wonderful, wonderful albums. Um, and they weren't, they weren't expensive. I think they cost me 16 quid each. And 
another purchase. Pete, my local, local shop's been doing some uh, like uh, crate, virtual crate digs, and I picked up this Hall of Fame. This is a greatest hits comp of George Fame. Fame. Um, I think released in 1966. It's a mono copy it's on the Columbia label. Georgie Fame, um, Clive Powell, uh, as he's known to his mum and dad. Um, he got his name because he got sort of um, tagged into the Larry Palms stable of artists and. Larry Pons had a, uh, had a penchant for ch changing their name to some up trashy. You had Billy Fury, uh, Dickie Pride, Vince Eager. Um, so you get, get get an idea of sort of um, how he sort of t t viewed his artists. Um, but Georgie Feynman was more to that. Um, expert um, Hammond player. Um, and this is where we appeared with the, with the Blue Fames. Um, Georgie Fame had, the, had a lot of hit singles. Uh, only he had three of them. Only went to the, in the top ten. But what was unique about the hitting the top ten was they went on to be number one. So on here you've got Yeah Yeah and Get Away. Um, they're on the album. The other one in on the album. That's is when he signed to CBS, and that's the Ballad of Bonnie and Clyde. But on here you've got his version of Sunny. Sitting in the Park is an absolutely wonderful song. Um, wonderful production on that. It's well worth che checking out. Um, yeah, pretty much after this that came out, the Blue Fames were gone. Um, it was Georgie Fame. And I think for a certain period, he went down the sort of like, I wouldn't say the cabaret route, but he did have a hit with Alan Price, Rosetta. Um, and sort of, so it disappeared. Well, I wouldn't say disappeared a bit, but he was still playing like the jazz clubs because jazz was a big love of his, and he's an exceptional um, Hammond player. Uh, Van Morrison's used him. Um, he's appeared with Van Morrison over the years as well. Wonderful, wonderful album. I mean, his debut album with the Blue Fangs is highly sought after. Right, and the final purchase, and I've been after this for a while. Rock bottom. Robert Wyatt. Uh, you may remember that it was one his reissue, um, his greatest hits album, which was reissued last year, was one in the top five reissues. Um, Rock Bottom released 1974 after he had his accident, produced by Nick Mason. Um, most of the songs were actually written before the accident. Um, he spent a lot of time in Venice. His partner, Alfie, I think, had a job with the film Death in Venice. Um, and so he was hanging around, so he got a lot of the songs. However, the whole thing with the accident was is that he had to spend a lot of time. To those who don't know, the accident he felt he was drunk, he fell off a balcony and broke, he, um, broke his spine, which left him in a wheelchair. Um, so he had a lot of time to sort of, um, while lying in his bed, get ideas in his head about these songs. And obviously he couldn't play the drum, he, he couldn't play the bass drum, he could hit toms and his bongos and whatever, but he couldn't use his legs. And it may have affected his voice a little bit because there's, there's a wistfulness in this, um, a melancholy in, he, in his voice that's just totally unique. Um, it's wonderful. You've got, the, you've got, really his friends came out to help him on here. So, so Nick Mason, um, uh, Produ uh, produced the album. You've got um, Mike Oldfield's on here, um, Richard Sinclair's on here, Hugh Hopper's on here, I'm just trying to think anybody else. Fred Fifth is on here as well. Um, absolute wonderful. Robert Wise friends and fans so really came to his aid. I think Gene Shrimpton brought a car that they could use, him and Alfie could use. Um, Julie Christie let famously lent uh, let them um, rent, rent her apartment in London, which they eventually brought off her. Um, yeah, and that, that so that was the first album. But this is a twofer. So on the back of this, this is on here this follow up album in nineteen seventy five. Roof is stranger than Richard. 
sort of play in the word truth is stranger than fiction. Um, this album, Robert White took ownership of the production and it's a bit more, there's a lot more jazz involved. Um, because Rock, Rock Bottom was quite a successful album uh, for Wyatt. Um, in, in fact, the song on here that's not on the album, I'm a Believer, became a hit single. And it sort of featured in one of the most infamous ep incidents on Top of the Pops. Robert Wyatt was at that point in a wheelchair. The producers said, we, it, 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 it's the single did well enough for him to appear on Top of the Pops, but the producers said, well, no, he, he, he can sit in a chair, but we're not having him in a wheelchair. Um, it, 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 I think it might scare the um, viewers or something like that, you know, to see somebody in a wheelchair. You know, this is 50, nearly 50 years ago, so you can see it, you know, times have moved on, but yeah, crikey. Uh, they did relent in the end because I think the band was sort of like saying. Um, but anyway, back to this. As I said, this is more of a, a jazzier album. Virgin had given him a three year, um, free album deal. This didn't sell as well as Rock Bottom. And I think Virgin called their interest a little bit. I think it was just a little bit too out there. Even for Virgin at that time, who was famous for having like, like prog, crap, rock bands on. And White never remained another album for 10 years. I think the nearest, he did the odd single of most famously Shipbuilding. Um, but that, that, that really was about it. But great album. Great to find the Toofers. I'm a big fan of Toofers. Um, I think I've said it before. I think it's an opportunity that the record companies are not taking advantage of. They're too interested in trying to fleece us off. Yeah, I don't mind the reissue, but it's reissues with um, everything the gubbins um, thrown in. You can stick that on streaming sites. You know, I just want the al the album for what it is. Um, but that's me not for me. So there you go, um, BC. Um, that's a, that my March finds. Hope everyone's well. Um, it's Easter Monday here, bank holidays. I'm not going to plan to do much. It's gone a bit cold, and there's a predicting snow tonight and tomorrow. Um, hey ho, spring. Um, so um, it's looking good in the UK. Um, since my since the last video, I had my first jab, uh, the AstraZeneca. So my arm's still attached, though. I've not had too many side effects. Um, and this time next week, the non-essential shops are going to be reopening. That's record shops, at, at, you know, clothes shops. So we're slowly coming out of it. Obviously, we've just got to be mindful of the variants. Um, and, you know, you know, I know, know what's happening across the across the channel across the channel, and it is a bit worrying if it comes over here and this new variant is a bit stronger than the vaccines, then we're back to square one. Um, but you know, you know, we've got to look forward to now. It's, it's now, you know, we've got longer days. You know, we've got more time on our hands. So, anyhow, so there you go, VC. So whatever you guys get up to today uh, on the bank holiday, make sure you have a good one. Um, really, if you like what you see, you've not seen it before, just click on the subscribe button. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, love the interaction feel free to leave a comment i will endeavor to get back to you so where you get up to vc make sure you have a good one and whatever you do keep spinning um, look after yourselves keep spinning and more importantly keep on smiling